Hey, what's going on guys? Jason here and welcome to our latest video. In this video, we are going to go over some of the differences between uh, Generation 3 LS car and truck engine. Um, a lot of people go and get the, the 5.3s from the junkyard and end up spending a lot more money adapting over accessories and stuff like that to fit their application. So I'm going to go through and show you some of the things that will work and some of the things that will change over and some of the things that just aren't going to work in this video. So make sure you stick around. So, all right, what a pain that was. All right, guys, so we're going to start off in everybody's favorite place to start, and that's the intake manifolds. So you can see here, this is a Corvette intake manifold. It's still loaded. It's got the fuel rails and injectors still on it and some PCV stuff. Um, and this is for a 2004-5 V8 uh, pickup truck. Um, they're all pretty much the same all the way through from the 4.8 up to the 6.0, so there's not a lot of differences or any more desirable one that you should get than the other. The first difference right off the bat, you can see here, is the height. Now, the LS1 intake for applications that are gonna need to be uh, lower down, where you don't have a lot of hood clearance, the LS1 intake here, um, the car intake is the one to go with. Uh, the truck intake is a lot larger um, it makes a little bit more flow, um, but a lot of applications you're not going to be able to fit this. As a general rule of thumb on these, if you're going to be putting this engine into a car, you'll probably end up using the car variant, whether it be CTSV, Corvette, or F body. But if you got the hood clearance, like you're going to be putting it in a truck, you can usually use the truck intake. Um, however, there are some applications where you're not going to be able to fit the truck intake onto your project because of hood clearance. So let's go ahead and see what these look like real quick on the engine. All right, guys. So here is our Corvette intake on our Ultra XJ engine. And from the center of the crank to the top of the intake manifold is right around 17 inches. Um, so that gives you a little frame of reference for about how tall this sticks up. Now, but let's go ahead and look at the engine now with the truck intake on it. So guys, here we are with the truck intake manifold on here. Now from the center, the crank bolt up to the top of this manifold now is 22 inches. So we've gained five inches in height right off the bat just by switching the intake manifold. So putting the LS back on there is going to drop that about five full inches. So if you're really worried about hood clearance, the car intake's the way to go. All right, so one more thing while we're talking about intake manifolds. Now, this is an F-body intake manifold, and this is a Corvette intake manifold. And even though they're both LS car intake manifolds, there is a difference between the two, and that is this port right here on top. Now, if you're going to be taking away all the emissions components and stuff from the F body, then you're going to have to get a block off plate right here. But this intake has inserts right here for a cable throttle body. Now, if you move over here to the Corvette manifold, you'll see it doesn't have the EGR port anymore, but those holes right there do not have the inserts for a cable throttle body. Now you can buy these inserts. I'll put the part number right down here on the screen for you guys um, and you can press them in here so if you want to run a cable throttle body you don't have to necessarily have this manifold with the EGR block off you can have this manifold and put these inserts in all right guys so the next place that we end up is right here with the throttle bodies since we were just talking about the intake manifolds this is a good place to jump off now this is the stock Corvette throttle body for our Ultra XJ engine. It's 75 millimeters in size and electronically controlled. Um, let you get a good look at it there. Now the throttle body that we're going to be putting on the XJ engine 
is right here. Uh, this is an F body, cable controlled, 75 millimeters once again. I'm pretty sure all stock LSs are 75 millimeters. I could be wrong, um, but I'm pretty sure all three of these are 75 millimeters. So you'll notice the three bolt pattern here. It's pretty consistent between the three. Here is the truck throttle body. Now you can see it's a lot gummier. I need to clean this one up really good, but I don't even know if I'm gonna use it for anything. However, it's also electronically controlled. Um, its own unique type connector. So if you are working, these three throttle bodies will adapt over and all three of them will bolt up. They are all identical in mounting flanges and bolt hole locations. So you can use any one of these three throttle bodies depending on which one fits with the rest of your accessories on any one of the generation three LS engines. So since we started the engine, one of the very next places that we're gonna go is to the very bottom of the engine. These are a couple different oil pans for an LS engine. Now this is for a truck um, LS engine. This is a 2007 Yukon 6.0 oil pan. And this is the oil pan stock off our Corvette. Um, you can see here kind of the shape of it on the bottom and how wide it is and how that might, you know, inhibit you from using that on certain applications. Um, they all have unique trays down inside of them. I have this one removed because I cleaned it up. But one of the things that's common between all of them is the actual gasket itself. These gaskets are riveted on from the factory, um, rivet locations being there and there. They will all switch over. If you need a new oil pan gasket like I do, you do not have to rivet the new one in. However, you can. Um, it's a pretty simple process to just go ahead and drill out the rivets. Um, so not a whole lot to be said about oil pans. There are a few different configurations. There's an F body, there's a truck, there's a Corvette, and there's a CTSV oil pan. All of them work for different applications on generation three engines. So guys, the next thing that we're gonna talk about here is water pumps. Now I brought both water pumps over here to show you the difference between the two. Now the most common intake manifold that people use is gonna be the LS car manifold. So we've got that one on here just for mock-up reasons. Um, and we will show you what the two different water pumps look like on there and how they might affect your different application. So this is the truck water pump. We'll go ahead and start by throwing it on there. Let's secure it up with a couple bolts. So we've got the water pump bolted up here. You can see that clearance is tight between the water pump and the crank. And you can also see that this particular outlet on the water pump sits pretty tall. It actually sits taller than the intake manifold in this application. So let's go ahead and take a quick look and see what the Corvette manifold looks like. And another thing to note guys, sorry about that, um, is this pump pulley actually sits forward of the crankshaft now. Um, let me go ahead and grab the GoPro and show you that from a different angle real quick. So here's what I'm talking about. You can see the difference between the water pump stick out with the truck and how far it physically sits in front of the crank. And here you can see that the outlet actually sticks taller than the intake manifold. So next up guys, we're gonna go ahead and throw the Corvette water pump up here. All right, so you can see the difference between the two. The clearance down here is still just as tight, but the outlet of the water pump physically comes forward so it doesn't impede with anything how it comes up and over here with the truck. Now you can take a look 
from the side and see that the water pump pulley actually now lines up with the crank pulley. So if you end up switching over water pumps to gain clearance here because of your intake manifold, you're gonna have to swap your crank pulley out too. So guys, the next thing that we're looking at here are starters and alternators. Um, start with the starters since they're up front here. You can see that the Corvette starter over here is physically longer than this truck starter. Um, this truck starter is a remand aftermarket version, so I'm not 100% sure how close that is to the OEM, but you can see here that this one physically bolts through the starter on two locations, and this one does not. So I do not think that the starters are compatible between trucks and Corvette LS1s. Um, let's go ahead and move back to the alternators. The alternators have the same style mounting ears, but there is a different spread between the two. Um, the pulley size is also smaller on the truck alternator than the Corvette alternator. And to finish it up, the two wire plug on the back of the truck alternator versus the four wire plug on the back of the Corvette alternator. So these will not interchange. If you've got a truck, you need a truck starter and a truck alt. And if you got a Corvette, you need a Corvette starter and a Corvette alternator. All right, guys. So one of the next things I wanted to talk about real quick is block architecture and material. So if you take a look at this block, this is a cast iron block. This is for our project CTSV. Um, you see there, it's a six liter block. It's cast on the back. Um, this is full cast iron. Um, we're going to send this block off to the machine shop really soon to have some fun stuff done for our CTSV project. We're going to be punching this thing out uh, 30 thousandths and we're going to be doing some really good stuff to it. It's going to be a blast, guys. Um, going to be building a 408 stroker for the Cadillac, having some new uh, cam bags and stuff pushed in. But enough of that. This is a cast iron block. Physically, the architecture is the same. It's the material that's different. Now moving over here to our Corvette engine. You can see here this block is 100% aluminum. Most of the car engines are aluminum. Cast here on the back 5.7 liters. Um, you can save about 70 or 80 pounds with one or the other. Now if you got an aluminum block you're going to save a little bit of nose weight um, but a lot of people actually run the cast iron block so they can run boost out of them and, and do all kinds of fun stuff. So difference between the two, cars are usually aluminum, trucks are usually cast iron. You can bore the truck engines out much bigger than you can the aluminum blocks. The aluminum blocks get kind of shady after you start really boring them because they have cast in sleeves. So you can't do too much boring on them natively. Um, so if you want to do a block with a bunch of boost, go ahead and get a cast iron block. That's what we're going to do. We're going to punch that thing out and it's going to go in our CTSV. So some exceptions to the rule are the Buick Rainier had an aluminum truck engine, which is actually a very desirable engine. Um, so did the Chevrolet SS uh it's like a pickup truck kind of thing. Um, it also had an aluminum engine and was more of a truck configuration. So aluminum or cast iron, it's your choice. So guys, the next thing that we're looking at here are starters and alternators. Um, start with the starters since they're up front here. You can see that the Corvette starter over here is physically longer than this truck starter. Um, this truck starter is a remand aftermarket version, so I'm not 100% sure how close that is to the OEM. But you can see here that this one physically bolts through the starter on two locations, and this one does not. So I do not think that the starters are compatible between trucks and Corvette LS1s. Um, let's go ahead and move back to the alternators. The alternators have the same style mounting ears, but there is a different spread between the two. Um, the pulley size is also smaller on the truck alternator than the Corvette alternator. And to finish it up, 
the two wire plug on the back of the truck alternator versus the four wire plug on the back of the Corvette alternator. So these will not interchange. If you've got a truck, you need a truck starter and a truck alt. And if you've got a Corvette, you need a Corvette starter and a Corvette alternator. All right guys, so the final thing that we're gonna talk about here is engine plastics. I prefer the Corvette coil covers. Um, I think GM did a great job when they designed the LS engine to go in Corvettes. I think it's a beautiful engine and I kind of think it sets the standards now. It's what everything is based off of as far as looks goes for an engine. So kudos to GM for that. I like the old school Corvette coil covers. I just think it's a clean, classic, timeless look. You can do so much with these and it looks great. Now when we get to the truck, um, this plastic cover right here fits over the truck intake manifold, um, which is just ugly. There's, there's no way about it. Um, it's just an ugly manifold. There, there's not a whole lot that you can say about it. Functionally, it's great. Um, there are people out there that shave the intake manifolds and do all kinds of cool molding and welding with the plastic and make it look great. Maybe we'll try that in a future video. But this is the plastic cover for that. Uh, not very much of a look. Then we get over here to the LS2 cover. This is for the Cadillac. Um, yet again, just another big huge plastic cover. This one covers the entire engine. Um, so it kind of makes it look over refined in my opinion. I actually prefer a little bit more of the mechanical look to the engine than just covering it completely with this. Um, so maybe I'll find something somewhere in the middle. Maybe we'll do some sort of cool stuff with this to uh, get it dressed up and throw it back on the engine. But as far as right now goes, I'm leaving it off. So that's how it is. All right, guys, thank you so much for stopping by today. I really appreciate it. Thank you for all your support. You guys are amazing. To all the subscribers out there, thanks so much for sticking with me. We got a lot of good stuff coming up. Um, we will have some parts for the YJ soon, so we're gonna be flipping back to that. But our next video is going to be cleaning up and painting all the parts and dressing up our XJ engine to completion. I want that finished and off to the side. That way, when it gets a little bit nicer outside, we can start doing all the paint work for the engine bay and get that thing installed. So once again, guys, thanks so much for stopping by. Give us a big thumbs up if you like the content and you want to see more like it. We'll see you next time.